Hello students, in this lecture we will be talking about plant tissues. Plant tissues are of two types, meristematic tissue and permanent tissue. Meristematic tissue is also known as meristem. They are found at all growing points of the plant, that is the tips of root, tips of stem and branches. They are also present between bark and wood of trees and result in the increase in thickness. So let me just point out that this meristematic tissue can also be divided into apical meristem, intercalary meristem and lateral meristem. What are they? The apical meristem is basically the meristematic tissue which is present at the root tips and at the shoot tips. When present at the root tips they are known as root apical meristem and when present at shoot tips they are known as shoot apical meristem. The intercalary meristem is the meristem which is present at the nodes of the developing branch from where leaves arises. And lateral meristem which is also known as cambium meristem is present between the bark and the wood of trees which result in the thickness of the branch. So these meristematic tissue cells are very small usually cubical. This is a typical meristematic tissue and this is how the cells look. The cell walls are thin. They have large nucleoli that is the plural of nucleus. We can see that in these cells the nucleus is very very large. Vacuoles are almost absent. Cells are tightly packed. See there is no gap in between them. They are all sticking to each other and the cells are actively dividing. So these are the characteristics of meristematic tissue. Also new cells thus produced form permanent tissues which is the next type of tissue we will be talking about. Permanent tissue. Tissues made up of cells that have lost the ability to multiply. They have permanent shape and permanent function. They may be dead or alive. Now the permanent tissue can be divided into three types. Protective tissue, supporting tissue and conducting tissue. Protective tissues consists of cells with thick cell walls found on the surface of roots, stem and leaves. So as the name suggests, protective tissues provide protection to the plant. Let us look at the diagram over here. It protects the outside of the plant from any mechanical force coming from the environment. Next we come to supporting tissues. These are simple permanent tissues made up of same types of cells. That is they are homogeneous in nature. We are talking about tissues. There is a group of cells and all of these cells are of same type. Hence they are known as homogeneous. Now these supporting tissues can be classified into parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. Parenchyma composed of large thin walled cells usually with a large single vacuole. We can see over here these cells are quite large. These are thin walled cells. They have large vacuoles over here. These white patches are the vacuoles. They are found in soft parts of the plant like the cortex or the outer region and pith or the inner region of roots and stems. These cells are living cells. They store food and provide temporary support to the plant. Potatoes are mainly composed of parenchyma cells and they store large amount of starch. When present in leaves, these parenchyma cells are known as chlorenchyma. They help leaf to produce the food. Next we come to colenchyma. So these colenchyma is made up of parenchymatous cells which are elongated and are thick at the corners. These are the different forms of colenchyma. We can see how elongated and thick walled they are. These cells are also living cells. 
found in the leaf stacks and below the epidermis of stems helps to support the part of a plant that is they will give mechanical rigidity to the growing plant organs sclerenchyma sclerenchyma is composed of long narrow thick cells which are dead so this is a distinction from parenchyma and colenchyma the sclerenchyma cells are dead cells they are narrow thick cells cells develop thick walls due to deposition of lignin we can see over here these are the lignified cell wall which is thick they provide strength to plant parts of course being thick and strong they will provide strength to the plant parts found in stem and veins of leaves now we come to the third category of plant tissues conducting tissues they are also known as vascular tissue these are complex tissues composed of two or more types of cells and hence are heterogeneous in nature working as a single unit in case of the previous two tissues those were homogeneous in nature made up of single types of cells but the conducting tissues are made up of more than two types of but the conducting tissues are made up of more than one types of cells and hence they are heterogeneous in nature provides passage for water dissolved minerals and prepared food to move up and down the plant this is their function and conducting tissues are of two types xylem and phloem xylem xylem cells are thick walled in the form of tubular passages this is how a xylem tissue will look like thick walled with tube like structures within them provides upward movement of water and dissolved minerals absorbed from the soil by roots to other parts of the plant so we know the roots will absorb water and minerals from the soil and to transport the water and the minerals to the upper part of the plant these xylem tissues are involved in that transportation older xylem tissues form wood and they do not participate in transportation of water and minerals now xylem tissues consists of tracheids and vessels or trache and xylem parenchyma tracheids are elongated dead cells with large cavities without any content they have highly lignified cell walls and therefore provide mechanical support by developing various types of thickenings in their walls the xylem vessels or trache are long tube like structures which are meant for transporting water and dissolved minerals the xylem parenchyma consists of living parenchyma cells associated with xylem these cells serve for the storage of food that is sugar and starch and also help in the conduction of water and minerals finally we come to phloem phloem cells provide passage for the downward movement of the food manufactured in leaves to various parts of the plant we know that leaves have chlorophyll and they perform photosynthesis thereby producing food for the plant now this produced food needs to be distributed to all parts of the plant and who does that the phloem they also provide upward movement of the prepared food towards the growing new leaves so the phloem tissues will transport the food to the roots downwards and also to the new leaves that are formed upwards so the phloem is performing both upward movement and the downward movement of the food that is produced by the leaves the phloem consists of sieve tubes companion cells phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers with that we come to an end to the plant tissue this is a flow chart of the plant tissue this is a classification plant tissue can be divided into meristematic tissue and permanent tissue permanent tissue can be divided into protective supportive conducting supportive can be classified into parenchyma colenchyma and sclerenchyma and the conducting tissue can be divided into two parts xylem and phloem you can see the functions and their characteristics are present over here you can just take a look at it 
So, the important questions from today's lecture. Name two types of plant tissues, meristematic tissues, permanent tissues. What are meristematic tissues? Where are they found? What are permanent tissues? Give their types. What are protective tissues? Where are they found? What are supportive tissues? Give types. Differentiate between parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. Remember, when you are differentiating parenchyma, colenchyma, sclerenchyma, it's better to provide diagrams because that will enhance the quality of your answer and what are conducting tissues give examples what is xylem tissue give their function what is phloem tissue give their function so thank you if you enjoyed the lecture don't forget to give it a like and share it with your friends and do subscribe to my channel biology with sukanya i'll see you in my next lecture bye bye